It's not dissimilar to what we saw at the Met Gala, which was the day after the White House Correspondents' Dinner, and I read your piece on that, where you've got these stars, sort of. It's not like when I went back in 16, it was like Reese Witherspoon. It was all A-listers. I will admit Kim Kardashian was there with her husband, Mm -hmm. Kanye. But other than that, I mean, truly, it was truly A-list Hollywood talent. Now it's like all these wannabe influencers, of course, the entire Kardashian clan still going and Mm -hmm. celebrating of all people, Karl Lagerfeld. Like now you've got some people even in that world calling for Anna Wintour to be canceled, calling for the Met Gala to be canceled because they're so tone deaf about what people are actually going through in their lives and what the hell it is they're celebrating. Right. I mean, celebrating somebody who actively fat shamed and called women, certain women ugly, said feminists were ugly, you know, and and that's what I mean about there, there's a, a certain strata of power brokers, uh, celebrities who just truly refuse to read the room. And it seems at times that Anna Wintour is transmitting from an alternate planet you know, to look at what was going on at that red carpet and the caliber of guests. I mean, that was once the gala of galas. You could not buy a ticket unless Anna approved you. And I thought it was so interesting this year. So there were three Kardashians, I believe. Others Mm -hmm. left off the guest list. It was Paris Hilton's first time getting in. And that was because she was a guest of Marc Jacobs, who is a longtime pet of, of Anna's. But It feels grasping. It feels desperate. It feels very let them eat cake. Um, And I I mean, I honestly think that Vogue lost all of its authority the moment she caved and put Kim and Kanye on the cover. That was it. Mm. And of course, was so quick to celebrate Jill Biden and Michelle Obama, but managed to ignore the only first lady that we've ever had who's an actual supermodel. (laughs) <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, we know her politics, uh, you know, but, you know, also this is a woman who commissioned a sympathetic profile on the Syrian first lady. Mm. So and clueless. this, you know, gets swept under the rug uh, by, by much of the mainstream media um, because Anna's, I, I mean, it's, I think she will, she will, go to her grave, you know, before she relinquishes her title and her position at Condé Nast. But Vogue is so irrelevant as it is. I mean, when was the last time you looked to Vogue for anything? Never. I haven't. I don't, I don't even do it when, you know, she had me over. She actually had me over to have lunch with her after that, that presidential debate. And it was like going to meet with a head of state. It was like, the guys with the headsets, the Janet Jackson headsets, like she's coming we're, and we're 15 away and we're 10 away and, five, and like, it was just like absolutely absurd what you had to go through to meet with her. And then there was another time back then where it was a couple years later, she was through this big party at her house for journalists, like female journalists. Mm-hmm. And I went to that and there were some CNNers there and there was some, you know, people more in our industry. And it was the most absurd thing, Maureen, because we all, she, she has one of these townhouses where, you come in through sort of what is the basement and you see the, this one area, but then you walk upstairs to get to the main living area. So we were all up in the main living area and having drinks and talking about Trump. It was during Trump. And then it was time to go. You know, it was like a two-hour cocktail party. So we were all being escorted out. And she had us walk right by the dining room table, which was on floor one, with Amal Clooney, and sort of her A-listers as we, the little plebe journalists, were escorted out. Wow. So What rude. a telling detail. <laughs> what? That is insanity. <laughs> Isn't it? Most of us be too embarrassed to do that. Like, if you're going to have a party with just your A-list portion of the party, have it a place that the other guests don't have to walk right by to get out. Oh, no, no, no. She has to rub your faces in it. She has to remind you. She is queen of, of all she surveys, and that extends to New York media elite, and she's going to make you feel a little bit less than. So any sort of excitement you may have had about getting a private invitation to Anna Wintour's townhouse, right? It's just, you're completely 
you know, d- deflated on your way out. It's so on brand. I love it. Yeah. But she, of course, wants us to think she's pro women. That was all like these women journalists and so on. And yet, weirdly, I haven't seen the big profile in Vogue calling out Leah Thomas for stealing our medals or calling out San Francisco University or San Francisco, whatever college it was, for attacking Riley Gaines. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax pros at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, including those who took PPP loans, even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. 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 Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.